showing us this afternoon. A lot of eyes will be focused on this particular building today to see how Alabama responds. Obviously a tough loss to Ole Miss. How important is this week, is this game for Alabama's 2015 season? You know, I think qualitatively speaking, you look at the leadership, the intangible aspects of your football team, that's what they're going to want to see in this one, the bounce back and who's going to be leading the charge in a subsequent game after a loss. Speaking of leading the charge offensively, this has become Jake Coker's team at least today. That's according to Coach Nick Saban. What do you make of Jake Coker being their guy? Well, I think what he did last week was he showed a little bit more passion in the game. Obviously, the completion percentage has to come up. The production in general in the passing game could be better, and the decision-making as noted by the three interceptions versus the five touchdowns, somewhat concerning, especially knowing that they want to play strong defense. But versus Ole Miss, they felt like Jake Coker gave them the best chance, even though he was locking in on receivers and leading defenders to where he was going to go with the football, cost on a couple of different turnovers, lost the possessions. But it was the moxie, the savvy, the gamesmanship that they saw from their quarterback but they hadn't seen as of yet. Perhaps he'd been pressing to that point. He came in in relief. It wasn't a perfect game, but he threw Alabama in a lot of ways back into the game versus Ole Miss a week ago. Well, we'll see. We heard Tony Barnhart in our pregame show leading up to this game, and Alabama needs to find that identity. We'll see how much Jake Coker throws the ball and how much they will actually run the ball today. Now, speaking of this Louisiana Monroe team, they come in one and one. They'd already played Georgia earlier this year, but back in 2007, none of these Alabama players were around for that. But nonetheless, ULM came in here, and they pretty much shocked the college football world. Charlie Weatherby, the head coach, put a 21-14 win over Alabama and Nick Saban. And we talked to Coach Saban about this, and he says, you know what, I have not forgotten this. And he knows that this ULM team certainly has some weapons, especially offensively. Yeah, and we've seen some of those weapons. Saw this team in week one versus the University of Georgia, and Rashawn Caesar at the receiver position got off on the Georgia defense. 13 catches, 153 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And on back-to-back -back drives, it was basically the Rashawn Caesar show. And I think that today they will certainly want to highlight his production at that receiver position. He, along with the Jalen Holly, could be the focal point of what ULM wants to do offensively. Caesar, number two in the country, averaging over 11 receptions per game. It's early in the year, but he certainly has been a playmaker. Now for more, on this matchup, let's go downstairs. Third member of our team is Casey Smith. Hey, Dave, a framed photo of the post-game celebration still hangs in Malone Stadium at ULM, but that day means so much more to Alabama as well. After being handed his only home loss to an unranked team at Alabama, head coach Nick Saban vowed that the Crimson Tide would get it fixed. And guys, I'd say he's done more than that since that day. They've gone 87-13, won three national championships. And guys, I think it's hard not to argue that that relaunched the Alabama dynasty. There is no doubt about it. A tough, tough day, though, for the Crimson Tide to swallow, losing to Louisiana Monroe in that game. Matter of fact, you have to go back to 2007 to see the last time Alabama's lost back-to-back -back games. That was a year the Tide finished up 7-6. 2015, a different scenario. Alabama, in front of close to 100,000, trying to get back to some Alabama football. And Darius Stewart hit it to 15 and dropped there. Big collision. The Tide will be backed up inside their 20-yard line as we look at this Alabama offense. And obviously, you're going to probably see this run game try to get cranked up today. Uh, and if they do decide to throw the football, a couple of guys we highlighted will be a factor in that passing game, especially since uh, the injury to Robert Foster. Yeah, O.J. Howard we knew was going to be a weapon, uh, an overgrown wide receiver who's become a true tight end this season in the Alabama offense. And Richard Mullaney, a surprise, 18 targets last week. The bulk of those coming on key downs on third and fourth. Out of that pistol, first carry goes to Derrick Henry, the junior. He picks up a yard. Vanagu with the tackle for this Louisiana Monroe team. And a quick update on ULM. If you, do, if you don't know much about them, this is a team that returns a ton of players. Nine starters defensively, including seven guys that are multi-year starters. Another handoff inside between the tackles for Henry. And he only gets uh, about a half a yard, maybe a yard. Justin Backus, the free safety, came looping in for the tackle for the Warhawks. 
And Todd Berry loves his defensive unit. He thinks this might be the most talented unit he's had yet in their time. And Louisiana Monroe has been very aggressive and are often very active in their front. Lots of different blitz looks, and you'll see a lot of stemming of their defensive front. You see them shifting around now before they get into their line. On third down, Coker looking to throw, has some time, comes underneath. Delaney hit at the 23-yard line, well shy of the first down, only gets four yards. Cody Robinson comes up to make the play for the Warhawks, and here comes the Alabama punting team. Great opening series for Louisiana Monroe on defense. A couple inside zone runs. They're crashing from the edges. Justin Backus did a great job from the backside of tackling Derrick Henry and forcing that third down attempt. And yet again, another target to Richard Mullaney. That time the route not near enough to pick up the first. Alex Harrelson will snap it to J.K. Scott, averaging just under 40 yards a punt. And shanks this one. Hits at the 45, takes a Warhawk bounce, and they'll have it at the Alabama 40 for their opening possession. An 18-yard punt. Early on, we talked about the type of response that you get. This is certainly not what Alabama was looking for, but a tremendous field position and opportunity for Louisiana Monroe offensively. Their quarterback, Garrett Smith, we saw him in the opener. He was delivering some of those passes to Rashawn Caesar. The completion percentage is through the roof. The production can get better and will. Todd Berry, as the play caller, looks to be aggressive, knowing, I think, that he's far more familiar with the talent he has now at the quarterback position in Garrett Smith. Spring Branch, Texas. Boy, he took a couple of early shots at Georgia in week one in his first career start, threw an early interception, but really settled in nicely. Coming off a fantastic game against Nichols. 370 yards through the air. First carry. Eric Smith will pick up a couple of yards. Jaron Reed comes in to make the tackle for this Alabama defense. So clearly Coach Berry's not looking to protect his quarterback in this one. Yeah. The first, first play is to run him right into the, the mouth of the beast. There's not likely to be a lot of rushing room versus this Alabama defensive front. One of the most physical down fronts that I've seen in college football in a long time. ULM will spread the field all day long. Here comes Caesar in motion. And a flag down, a whistle blow stops the play up front. Ball start. Offense. Number 75, five yard penalty, second half. That is Matt Leffler, our referee today. I thought it was a little bit strange. They're already, they were holding hands, left guard, left tackle, Ray Balthazar, and Frank Sutton Jr. It's not that loud, it wasn't that loud on that down, but the stem by the defensive front, Nashawn Robinson, got the early jump. Smith right through the hands of his intended target on the far side of Jalen Holly, who's coming off an eight catch, 155 yard performance in their last outing against Nichols State. Take a look at this ULM starting lineup. They've got some playmakers in this group. They're gonna have to run the ball at least a little bit, have some success today. And also protect and Garrett Smith. They think Chase Region is their best offensive lineman at right tackle. He will be tested here today versus this Alabama front. So now it's third down, and ULM chasing the downs. Set up a little screen. Well played. Reuben Foster read it, made the play, loss of three. Reuben Foster in his linebacking position, he calls the defensive sets. So he's been asked to do a lot more than he had previously in his career. They like what they're getting out of Foster, not only as a tackler, but also in communicating with the balance of the defense. Excellent recognition and diagnosing that screen, picking his way through the traffic and making the tackle. Boy, a really spread formation on this punt by ULM. Wall sends it down to Jones. Fair catch at the 10-yard line, a 35-yard punt. So Alabama will have the football for the second time this afternoon. 
Alabama's offense averaging 36 points a game, over 500 yards of offense back on the field for the second time today. Jake Coker getting the start. For more on that, let's go down to Casey Smith. Dave, Alabama offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin told us that Jake Coker got all the first team reps all week in practice because they want him to come out today and just play football and not overthink the competition side of things. They loved what they saw from him against Ole Miss, his energy, his passion, and his competitive edge, and they hope that continues today. You know, it's, when we were in our meetings with Coach Saban and Kirby Smart and Lane Kiffin, all of them were like, you know what, yeah, that loss hurt last week. It really did sting, but, I mean, the, the sky's not falling. Coker to throw on first down. It's his man, the freshman Calvin Ridley, out over the 20 to the 23-and-a-half yard line, a gain of 13. So many playmakers for this Alabama offense, and that's part of the reason, I think, for the don't panic type of mentality. Yeah that we got from the coaching staff. Look, they're in that game. It's five turnovers, 500 yards of offense. I mean, they could have won it at the end, didn't, of course, but they could not have played worse from a turnover perspective and stayed in it. And you could see why, you know, you lose a Robert Foster at the receiver position, and then the Calvin Ridleys get their opportunity to receive. Kenyon Drake checks it at running back. Over to throw again. Incomplete, dropped on the far side by Ardarius Stewart, covered by Trey Caldwell, one of the better cover men out of the Sun Belt, a senior out of Richardson, Texas. This passing game is going to have its opportunities today versus Louisiana Monroe. They like to play man, and it's certainly the Sun Belt Conference. They're one of the better man cover teams. They'll be challenged today by Alabama, but also giving this passing attack for the Crimson Tide to hone their edge versus contested throws. Second down and 10 now. Loose around the SEC logo. Justin Back is hitting OJ Howard. I'll tell you what, when you look at this Alabama offense, you mentioned some of the weapons. I think OJ Howard's a guy that they certainly, at least going forward, will find 88 a lot more. Yeah, you know, and coming into the season, everybody had wondered, you know, where is this OJ Howard kid in this offense? He's going to have to shoulder more and more of the burden. He's somewhat thin at receiver, certainly inexperienced. He's a guy that's a more veteran presence. Laney goes in motion on third down. That's a little bit of heat picked up. Pass is caught at the 35-yard line. There's Mullaney with a tough catch over the middle. Mitch Lane with the stop for ULM. I've already heard some comparisons to another receiver of the past, Kevin Norwood for Alabama. Sure-handed is Mullaney and becoming a favorite target for Jake Coker. Just bobbled and dropped by Ridley. It'll be second down and 10. You see already moving Richard Mullaney all over the formation. That time, number 16 ended up lining up as a fullback. They had a full slide protection, like a spider protection. He got two options to the right hand side. That time, just a little bit underthrown by Jake Coker. This ULM defense, their, their, their base is basically nickel. They run that 3 3 5, but in today's game, that's just uh, the way the game's going now. Most teams line up and play nickel anyway. Boy, look at Drake dancing around and gets over the 40 to the 42-yard line, giving seven yards. Braxton Moore, that middle linebacker, makes the play for the Warhawks. Kenyon Drake, excellent at stopping and starting. That time, there was a gap scheme run, something I think Alabama's done very well this season, but not very often. That time found the backside hole. Go for the throw. Gets it out to Howard, the tight end. He's to the 43 to half yard line. That'll be a, a yard and a half, maybe two shy of the first down. Trey Hunter on the coverage. Basically the same play that we saw on first down, except O.J. Howard was lined up in the fullback position. They flood him out to the right-hand side. Nice tackling in the open field to deny the yardage needed. And after moving the football for a second, Braxton Moore, who's really stepped up in the middle of the Warhawk defense, denying a conversion. Caesar back to return the punt. Fair catch taken inside the 20, a 38-yard kick. So you, you.
Try the new DQ Bakes Hot Desserts a la Mode menu today. Matt, Bubba says hello. Need to be down here eating these, not up in the booth. This is where it's at. <laughs> you are known everywhere. That's Bubba. Who's Bubba? That's my boy. <laughs> we went to high school together. That guy's a, he's a champion barbecue guy, too. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, that was the third annual Bama Brew and Q State Barbecue Competition. KCBS, that'd be the Kansas City Barbecue Society sanctioned that event. You know, there was some good eating going on before the game today. You're not kidding. There's some elite athletes on the field. That's some elite barbecue. ULM with their second possession. Garrett Smith will keep it off the left side, gets it out to the 23 yard line. That's a gain of six. Garrett Smith, when you go back to, he's a redshirt freshman, but go back to his high school career and there was really nothing fancy about his numbers. He threw for about 2,000 yards. He did rush for about 680 his senior year. 21 TDs, only three picks. Just kind of a quiet guy that gets the job done. I tell you what, he announced his presence with authority this season in that opener. I'm not sure even the ULM coaching staff knew what they had at quarterback until that game. Boy, swallowed up that time by Denzel Duvall. A loss of four on the play and give Duvall his third tackle behind the line and his first sack of the season. All right, we talked about Chase Region. The right tackle. You see right here working against Duvall. He's going to be coming off the edge, outside linebacker, but he plays on the line of scrimmage almost exclusively. And he just falls right back underneath once he reached the quarterback's depth. So difficult knowing that that pocket will collapse inside out with the way Alabama can pressure. Third down and eight for the Warhawks. They'll come near side, get it to Caesar, trying to turn the corner, nowhere to run. Swarmed by the Crimson jerseys, give them four, and now it's fourth down. You see Alabama, this is one of their favorite sets, certainly one of their favorite defensive alignments for Reggie Ragland. They get in their dime package, and they allow number 19 to roam around that interior portion of the offensive front, pick where he wants to attack. That is not an optimal down and distance, of course, for any offense. But again, we've seen Todd Berry not scary to get Garrett Smith going in the ground game with a couple inside runs. Chris Qualls, the true freshman from Searcy, Arkansas. Back to punt, averaging about 34 yards a kick. Pressure comes, he gets it away. Fair catch called for by Cyrus Jones at the 45-yard line. So Alabama's defense does force a flip. I'm very disappointed. I apologize to the people who support this program. Uh, that we didn't represent it with the class that it deserves to be represented with, and we will get it fixed. All right, we will continue to work to get where we want to go uh, relative to uh, the kind of football players that we develop, the attitude that we develop in them, the consistency that, that, that they play with, the responsibility they take for uh, getting their job done and doing their job so we can execute better as a group. That was the postgame comments after that 2007 loss to ULM, and I would say that that, that focus paid off. They went 12 and 2 in 2008, and then of course the rest is history. M message received, <laughs> yes. right, and accepted, because it certainly has resulted in a near dynasty. Eh, you could probably even call it that. Certainly, dominance is a fair moniker for what they've been able to build. I think in a lot of ways it helped this program hit the reset button. This is what can happen if you don't buy into the quote unquote process, and it certainly has paid dividends. Let's see what Alabama's offense can do here. They've had a couple of punts. They'll hand it to Henry off the left side. He'll pick up a two and a half, maybe three yards. Just not a lot of juice in the in the stadium today. You don't see a lot of it on the field right now. No, nah, you know, other than really the Kenyon Drake run. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of pop yeah. to the offense. That's for sure. We've seen a couple of passes completed, but oftentimes just short of the yardage needed to get the conversion. Second down and a short eight, long seven, if you will. A couple of tight ends set now for the Crimson Tide. Here's some pressure. Bama picks it up nicely. Pass is caught at the 42-yard line of ULM by Cam Sins. Trey Caldwell on the coverage. Some of these guys need to step up at receiver Cam Sims. 
It's another young target in the passing game. As we mentioned, they lost their top three receivers from a season ago. It wasn't just Amari Cooper, Christian Jones, DeAndre White as well. Here's Henry off the left side. He'll get it down to the 35-yard line. Give him six yards on the carry. These are the plays, these gap schemes. By gap schemes, I mean you pull a backside offensive lineman, you get a double team at the point of attack. This offensive line seems to do an excellent job with that type of a run game approach. Did a good job versus Ole Miss as well. And here today, those have been the better runs. Coker under pressure, throws it in the ground. ULM had that one snuffed out, looking for Calvin Ridley. Pressure came from Lorenzo Jackson. We talked about last week when Cooper Bateman got the start. We got supposed he was going to bring that run element to the offense. He didn't pull the football very much. Well, the second play of the game was a pull from the belly of the running back, and he hits O.J. Howard. A similar idea here. That time, though, well defended by the Warhawks on the perimeter. Coker, six out of nine, 42 yards to start this game. Two tight end set. He'll line up in that pistol with Henry, your tailback. He'll give it to the big fell. Big fell left side. Good stiff arm. Has the first down. I'll tell you what, if you let number two get his feet moving, if you talk about a downhill runner, I mean, it's, it's a downhill scenario for you as a defender. And the guy's a monster in this offensive backfield. And once he gets churning, it's a frightening proposition. Bama in the hurry up mode. Henry shakes off another ULM defender, give him nine more yards. Back-to-back -back outside runs, Alabama doing a great job of collapsing the right side of ULM's defensive front. Big Cam Robinson doing a good job of sealing the edge. And again. This time it's Kenyon Drake on the carry off the left side. That's a gain of five. And another first down, so they'll have an opportunity to pick up a first down right around the two-yard line. Stay two tight end set. Give it to Drake. Left guard. Makes a man miss. He's down to the five yard line. You're not going to see a lot of two back formations for Alabama this season. Certainly not with a lead blocker lining up in a traditional fullback spot. It's not bad to get a pulling guard out in front of your ball carrier. That time Alphonse Taylor pulling around to lead Drake into the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we're still trying to get. like Cody Robinson the senior outside backer he's been bothered with a foot injury didn't play in their last outing ULM only two games they've already had a bye week this is a team by the way it's going to play 13 regular season games they have that that waiver to play 13 because they're going to go out to Hawaii late in the year late November but they play 13 games only five are at home. Yeah, that's tough. Gosh, brutal. <laughs> Not only an early contest, an extra contest, but they have to do it packing your bags. Second down and three. They'll give it to Henry. Not much happening there. So now it'll be third down and about three. Once again, you first down line right around the two yard line. Jared Johnson and Colton Moorhead combined for that stop for ULM as Alabama gets to the line in a hurry once again. Here's Henry. And he'll be shy the first down. It'll be fourth down and about a yard and a half, maybe two. Lorenzo Jackson crashes in to make the play. You mentioned the big fella, Derrick Henry. If you get those legs turning, he's a menace. You get around his feet, especially early and around the line of scrimmage. You can trip him up. At that time, his backside ended up collapsing in and around Derrick Henry's ankles, which is probably the only place you can attack him as big as he is with the force the fourth down. Nick Saban's going to take a timeout, but he is pointing to the play clock. Said it never reset.
regardless of fourth down and about a yard and a half coming up during the timeout gives us an opportunity to visit with Dari back at the studio. All right, guys, it is time for an SEC right now, brought to you by State Farm, down 7-0, trying to snap that 10-game skid against Florida, Tennessee. Little wide receiver pass. Josh Dobbs on the receiving end, and he's gone. 58 yards for the touchdown, and it is a 7-7 game right now in the second. Well, I tell you what, that's a, that's a big game for both those, but I think it's a really, really big game for Tennessee. No question. I mean, they've lost for 10 straight years. That was one of the marquee matchups in that East Division. Hasn't been the case. A decade of dominance by the Gators. But Tennessee's been so close. You know, that 10 to 9 loss a season ago had to have been deflated. See what Bama has here. And ULM will take a timeout. Well, they, they brought in. They've got an overload. And they moved their, their right tackle. Dominic Jackson over to the left hand side. Todd Berry takes a timeout, wants to make sure that his troops are ready. This is a huge fourth down. We've seen this Warhawk defense deny the Crimson Tide on the previous two possessions. Now, you know, they get the ground game going a little bit, but the fourth, of course, a fourth and short, big opportunity for them to turn the tide away. You know, we, we keep hearing, what, what kind of offense is this? What is their, what is their mantra as a unit? And, it's hard to figure out. They're trying to run the football, but you're now looking at fourth down and about a yard here. They hadn't had much success once they got inside the 15 yard line running the football. Box down, doesn't it? And you look at it. Lane Kiffin is working his way through his troops. We were visiting with him yesterday. They were saying, look, we don't really need an identity. We can be somewhat amorphous. And that's my terminology more than it is theirs, but you take what you give them. They're only about 50%. They've already had eight fourth down attempts this year, only converting four. So here we go on fourth down on about a yard and a half. Coker under center out of the eye formation. Henry with the carry. And the size and the will gets Alabama a touchdown. The eighth for Derrick Henry. Well, they ran well behind the left side of the Alabama offensive front. And this time they borrowed yet another offensive lineman. Why not stick big Dominic Jackson over there as well? For 78. Force them to defend yet another gap over there. They collapse that side of the Warhawk defense. Adam Griffin in to attempt the point after. Cooper Bateman with the hole. And the kick is perfect. Alabama leads it 7 to nothing. 2.38 to go here in the opening quarter. Derrick Henry again finds the end zone. He's done this a lot. Number eight on the ground for the junior. It was an 11-play drive, but 10 of those were running plays capped off by Derrick Henry from a few yards out. Well, you know, this is a big offensive front, but it gets even bigger when you put 320 pounds, your right tackle there. And you're going to pull Alphonse Taylor to the point of attack. And we talked about the two back offense. Michael Nicewander in there as well. That's 900 pounds that you're slamming up into the point of attack. And that's excluding the 240 pounds that's carrying the football. <laughs> right. So you're talking about, you know, what, half a ton that you're blowing up in there? Nine straight game with a rushing touchdown for Derrick Henry. Caldwell on that return out over the 20 to the 22 yard line. So let's see if ULM can answer here. A couple of punts on their first two possessions. You know, this Alabama defense, you talked to Kirby Smart like we did yesterday, and, and, and you mentioned that this front seven, he is just, uh, he says it could be the best front seven he's coached since he's been here. That's saying something. Wow, I, uh, that was a mouthful. But I tell you what, when he said it, you know, my eyes didn't pop out of my head. Yeah. I, I'm sitting there looking, and you look at their down players, and it's not just the front line three. You know, they roll another three in there, and they're every bit as physical. They can be dominant along that line of scrimmage and off. Smith on the near side. Jalen Holly makes the catch, and he's swarming Crimson jerseys again. Fitzpatrick, the first one there, a loss of a yard. Let's go to Casey. 
Well, Dave, Alabama defensive coordinator Kirby Smart pulled Reuben Foster aside after that last defensive series and said, hey, you've got to call the plays quicker. As soon as the receivers are set, I want those plays called to the defense. And we'll have to call this one from the sidelines as he heads over to stand next to Kirby Smart on what's second down and long now, second and 11. Smith, high throw, pass is caught out around the 30-yard line. That's a Jalen Holly gain of nine. That'll set up a third down and about two, maybe two and a half. Fitzpatrick there to make the stop for the Alabama defense. Well, Jalen Holly, the other half of that pass receiving core, the duo that they like so much at ULM, Garrett Smith, starting to get him more incorporated in their passing game. So it's not so centered on Rashawn Caesar, who's yet to get going in this one. ULM can really use a conversion here. They're 0 for 2. On a warm afternoon here, their defense been on the field quite a while in the first quarter. They'll come near side. Caesar dropped it. Well, Caesar doesn't come up with this catch. I think if he handles it cleanly, he's in, he'd have enough to turn the corner and get upfield quickly. It wasn't third and much. But of course, you've got to secure the reception first. So he's getting closed upon quickly, unable to handle it. You mentioned it, Dave. They need to get something going offensively. So far, I haven't been able to do so. Qualls, uh, Searcy, Arkansas. Cyrus Jones. He's to midfield. A flag down back at the 42-yard line. Nifty return from Cyrus, but that will be coming back. Cyrus Jones, and they pulled him over to defense. Former receiver showing some moves. During the return, illegal block in the back. On the return team, number 20, the 10 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, that's on Sean Hamilton. And you see him trailing. It's going to end up, I think, being on. You see number 20 as he enters the screen right there. Block in the back to negate what was otherwise a pretty electric return by Cyrus Jones. So that'll put the ball back at the Alabama 47 yard line. That last drive, 11 plays, 10 of those on the ground. So maybe they're trying to just, just pound, ground and pound this ULM defense on a warm day here at Bryant Denny. You know, if it's there, you know, why get away from it? It was a slow start on those first two possessions. Go with what's working. Coker on a little play action. Going deep. One on one coverage. Dropped at the goal line. A Darius Stewart and Lindsey Pipkins shoulder to shoulder, and Stewart just couldn't hang on. And Pipkins does a great job of raking this football as it drops into the arms of Darius Stewart. The slow Darius just a little bit on that throw, hung just a hair, gave Pipkins a chance, seeing with that left hand, to rake that football out of there. Wide side of the field throw right through the hands of Chris Black. Boy, that throw was there. That's a couple, really. I mean, I'm, I'm splitting hairs on the Darius Stewart. It was a better defensive play that time, though. And Chris Black just has to come up with that reception. Pipkins again on coverage, but plenty of room to make that catch. You can see, missed opportunity there in the passing game. Well, now you're looking at third down and 10. That's the problem when you take that shot on first down. That ball was there. You don't come up with it. An incompletion on second. And you're facing a difficult third down conversion. Coker pocket stands tall going deep again. This one is overthrown looking for Stewart once again. Pipkins in coverage and ULM's defense forces a three and out. Stewart getting a lot of work. Matter of fact last week he got a ton of work. He played over 100 snaps last week. Pretty remarkable. We know obviously he's getting special team snaps as well. And Stewart who lines up on the right side of the formation exclusively. 
They'll send him deep. He's a guy that can stretch the defense for this Bama offensive attack. But it's the completions. It's the throws like the one on second down to Chris Black that the coaching staff are looking for this passing game to complete. It's not just on the quarterback. What a good high kick that will hit with the one and bounce into the end zone for a touchback. 12 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. Make it 11 now. Watch ESPN as your best friend on a busy college football Saturday. Use it to stream every game live on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Just download the Watch ESPN app or go to watchespn.com. That sucker, I was up here before the game, got here a little early, and I was just zipping through every game. It was unbelievable. Just find me the hot game. It is. I mean, the world is your oyster, man. What they, game you want to see? I know that they designed that and, and put it out because of me. So I appreciate all the folks at the, uh, the tech department back at ESPN for developing the app. The target demo, huh? Play by play, guys. <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Warhawks. Smith will keep it. And with well, the run game just uh, for ULM this year hasn't been great. And I'm trying to run against these guys from Alabama. Hard to get that run game cranked up against these guys. 15 minutes in the books, Alabama with a seven to nothing lead. We'll head back to the capstone right here on the SEC Network. Well, Alabama outgains ULM 95 to 14 in that first quarter. Hard to run against this Alabama defense. Yeah, part of the reason we're talking about, you know, somehow or other, Garrett Smith ending up with a football, it's because of this technique right here. Denzel the ball is gonna come upfield instead of closing down. And you'll see a Jalen Holly, number 21, blow through the backfield. Derek Smith's got no other choice but to hang on to this football. Right now, Alabama forcing ULM to try to keep the football in their quarterback's hands on these reads. Second down. Smith, empty backfield, throws near side. Caesar makes the catch, falls forward to the 29-yard line, about a yard shy. ULM has yet to pick up a first down this afternoon. They are a yard shy from doing that at the moment. Well, look where Rashawn Caesar stacks up. 34 straight games. You can tell why he's proven to be such a reliable piece of what they try to do offensively. See wholesale substitution that time by ULM, a new receiver group. It collapses. Smith goes down back at the 26-yard line on third down and one. And now they're looking at fourth down and about four and a half. Jaron Reed, first man there. Dylan Lee as well coming in from his linebacking position. It looked like maybe Garrett Smith was going to try to get that football out. Dylan Lee jumped up right in his line of sight. Jaron Reed. For 9 0, that is a pocket collapsing machine. Bad snap, loose football. Qualls in the end zone. He's going to try to run with it, and he is hammered at the 15 yard line. He loses 11 and slow to get up. Boy, did he take a shot. And it looked to me, Dave, it was a good snap. But it was one of the shield guys. It looks like that ball got tipped. I think it was Frank Sutton Jr., the right guard, who was lined up in the shield. Watch his hand. See it, it punches right off of his left shoulder. And ULM has had its difficulties in the punt game. Punt game. We saw it in week one versus Georgia, where that shield just was not holding up. They got a, a tip. Punt early in that game and one that was blocked in the end zone. And now, given the tide, a red zone possession to start a drive. First down from the 15. Coker to throw. Goes to the wide side. And Ridley! Touchdown, Alabama. Ridley, such a playmaker for this offense. Young, early in his career. And he's one of those guys that's going to have to step up. And they think he can be a, 
a Kenyon Drake type of a player for them. A guy that they can use in a lot of different ways offensively. Griffin with the point after attempt. It is up and it is good. So Calvin Ridley, the nation's top ranked wide receiver coming out of South Florida, Coconut Creek, Florida, with his first of what should be many Alabama receiving touchdowns. It was all set up by the miscue on the special teams. Short field and Alabama makes them pay. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has donated millions in scholarship funds. Alabama will kick it off again. Leading 14 to nothing. This time Caldwell will take a knee. And this ULM offense will try to find a way to pick up their first first down of the day. Narrowly missed one on a previous possession. Caesar incapable of coming up with the reception. Alabama doing a good job of keeping the football in the quarterback's hands. You know, forcing them to run the football with Garrett Smith and their read and their read run game. Smith. Five out of seven throwing the football, but only 18 yards. ULM with a total of nine yards of offense. They are minus nine in the rushing department. 18 yards through the air. Alabama put up 110 yards of offense. First down and 10 from the 25. Here's Holly fighting his way out to the 30-yard line. And this is a tricky situation. We talked to Todd Berry, the ULM head coach, about this. He He's calling plays this year. He's a former offensive coordinator and turned that over but uh, to a coordinator the last few years. But he's taken over the reins of the offense this year. And he loves the fast-paced tempo, spread them out. But in this situation, you've got to be careful doing that. It's true. Yeah, you got to protect your team. you got to protect your defense as well, especially if you're not picking up first down. Big collision at the 25. Smith goes down. Loss of four. And Alabama's getting after the quarterback now. DJ Petway, the first one there. You just know where to go with the football. And you have to know that eventually that clock has got to go off in your head. If you're Garrett Smith, you have to unload the football somewhere so that you're not taking a negative yardage play and a shot when you still possess the football. Get rid of it knowing that that pass rush is going to collapse in around you. So now you're at third down and 10, a dangerous situation here for the Warhawks. Caesar comes in motion near side. Three-man rush. That pass is dropped. Trey Perrier, the junior, out of Kenner, Louisiana, can't hold on. And another fourth down situation coming up for ULM. Even if Perrier comes up with that catch, Really nowhere to go once he makes the reception. Would have been shy of the yards needed in a three-man rush. When you're flooding the coverage with eight defenders and an underneath route, so there's nowhere to go. Qualls, good clean snap this time. End over end punt. Takes a UL bounce down around the 30-yard line, out of bounds at the 29-yard line, so a 46-yard punt. And Alabama's offense back on the field with 12.04 to go. Second quarter up a couple of touchdowns. Well, tonight on the SEC ESPN Network, it's conference play. Taking center stage, 25th ranked Missouri takes on the Kentucky Wildcats live from Lexington at 7.30 Eastern time. Exclusively right here on the SEC ESPN Network. And, of course, it'll be streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. And Missouri, they just keep finding a way to win. It has not been pretty. Meanwhile, Kentucky, they're at that uh, crossroads, much like Tennessee, that you wonder when it's coming. Right. Yeah, you're right there. I mean, no one more than Mark Stoops. Uh, Gary Pinkle, he's found ways to win with his team in all sorts of ways, defensive touchdowns, special teams. This year, really strong with the quarterback there as well. Coker stepping up in the pocket, underthrown and intercepted. Trey Hunter picks up the interception at midfield and is dropped there. 
An 11 yard return and now good field position for this ULM offense. It looked like Michael Johnson was coming in from his linebacking position and he ends up getting the better of Dakota Ball number 94 converted D lineman in the pass protection right there in the A-gap pressure and you see Coker had a similar ball last week versus Ole Miss where he's trying to deliver a ball downfield under duress. And once again another turnover when we talk about the decision making we've seen a couple of shots taken in this game. And blitzing has really undone what Alabama has tried to get going in the passing attack. Well, they have struggled versus the blitz. That ball's almost picked off. Denzel Duvall jumped, but I don't think he needed to jump. It looked like it was right in his belly. Well, Alabama does such a good job. Maybe some of the best in the country at tipping passes. That time, Denzel Duvall. I think he was going for the tip. The ball was thrown so low it ends up hitting him below his elbows. Well, they did a great job last week deflecting passes yeah. against that Ole Miss, especially in the first half at Ole Miss offense. Second down now and 10. Smith. Well, there's just nowhere to go. This guy, he didn't have any room to breathe. Well, that was one of those where you know, you're caught betwixt and between a little bit. The ball dumped right over a defender's hit. Not dissimilar to a touchdown play last week by Ole Miss. He's called offense so oftentimes building that pass offense, that pass option on all of their play calls. But such a difficult down to distance to find yourself in when you're unsuccessful on first and second down. They are, third and ten. they are 0 for 5 on third down conversions right at midfield. Empty set. Pass knocked away at the last moment was going to be shy of the first down, but a flag in that backfield. So hold on just a moment. I think I think they're going to get Ryan Anderson. He went high on Garrett Smith after he delivered the football. During the play, personal foul, targeting defense number 22. The previous play is under further review. That's. Ryan Anderson. Well, you be the judge. Yeah. I tell you what. I mean, that's that's crown of the helmet. You know, that's forcible contact above the head and neck area. It's it's pretty much textbook. They're going to say that wasn't enough. But he's got an opportunity to change his aiming point. To me, it looks like it's got. It really meets every qualification for a target. I mean, if you're Ryan, I mean, that's sometimes we'll see. We saw a couple weeks ago, maybe last week, I can't remember, quarterback slid and there was some contact. It's yeah. a tough play. There was a targeting in there. This is, I mean, it, 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 you just know you got to go lower than that. You got to go lower. I mean, that's the bottom line is the rule says you got to go lower. And you don't have to you know, end up hitting the, the defenseless player, quote unquote, with your helmet. It's just forcible contact to the head and neck this time. It was crown of the helmet and above the head and neck area. And not just yardage, you know, Dave. I mean, you're looking at a guy that, you know, will now have to sit out the balance of this football game. The guy that they were looking to contribute, Reggie Ragland's played a lot of a lot of snaps. The body's pretty banged up. It's not overly violent, but it's it's the location of the hit. I think it's going to get him. There is no foul for targeting. Oh my wow. goodness! Okay, will remain in the game. Fourth down. Wonders never cease. I tell you what. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow is right. Uh, the truth is, the spirit of the rule. I don't think that is a targeting call. But the problem is the definition of the rule. I don't know what it, that didn't meet as far as targeting is concerned. The head and neck area, crown of the helmet. That looks like it had it just about, just about all of it. Well, the update we're getting is that that was to the side of the face mask and not a direct hit to the head. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I don't read that in the rule. 
but we'll take a break. Ryan Anderson will keep playing on here in studio time for an SEC right now brought to you by State Farm. We showed you Tennessee tie Florida up the Vols now have the lead Jalen Hurd in from a yard out caps an 84 yard eight play drive. Remember 10 that's the number of consecutive wins for Florida over Tennessee 14 7 volunteers. Good one going on down in the swamp. You know, I think SEC football is just better when Florida and Tennessee have that rivalry going and they're both yeah. competing. I mean, I just, there's just something about it. Hey, and you know what? A lot of folks watching this game are saying, you know what? The Alabama Tennessee game, it's just more entertaining. You know, the more competitive, the more parity there is, the more interesting this conference is week in, week out. Alabama backed up just outside the five yard line. We'll give it to Henry. He gets it to the 13 yard line. Gain of six. Let's go downstairs, visit with Casey. Well, Dave, when Jake Coker came over to the sideline after that interception, he was visibly frustrated with what had happened. And Derrick Henry came over and they talked it through. He asked him what he saw, and then he said, Calm down, you've got this. No worries. Let's go out there and play. Quick snap again. Thanks, Casey. And here's Henry. Nice little stutter step out to the 20 yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. Well, sometimes that's what it takes. From a guy who's a big part of the offense, Derrick Henry settling down his quarterback and then turning around and putting together a couple of nice runs. Stutter step, not something that the big fella is known for to give you a leg and take it away. Henry switching sides, going to the left of Jake Coker. Coker in this game, 7 of 14 for 57 yards. Underneath, big hit. On Calvin Ridley, he'll pick up five, hold on to the football, but Lindsey Pipkins textbook tackle. I'll tell you what, it was a great play by both both sides that time. Lindsey Pipkins again in the coverage and a big shot, but Calvin Ridley makes a great catch and tremendous concentration to complete it. it is great. First down, Alabama at the 32. Give him seven. Trey Caldwell with the stop. I think Kenyon Drake threw every move that he knows on that run. <laughs> he bounces the run outside on the backside of that zone and then a spin. A stiff arm, a little bit of everything. Over the middle. Another big hit and another good clean reception on the other end. This time it's our Darius Stewart with a gain of 13 and you can move the chains. A nice pocket for Jake Coker to work in. Set his feet and deliver a football over the middle. Stewart, excellent concentration knowing that Cody Robinson was waiting to give him a little chin music. Out of the pistol, Coker looking to throw. As all day, it looks like there was uh, some Feet getting tangled up around the 45 yard line. No flag. Looking for Stewart. It's kind of a strange looking play. You're right, Dave. Along, along the line of scrimmage, and they're right there towards the tail end in the coverage as well. Strange timing on that entire play. Roland Jenkins getting tied up with Ardarius Stewart and along the line of scrimmage as well. Kind of tripping. Toss sweep. Drake runs the corner to midfield. Not got a bounce. By Roland Jenkins. Give him five. They went on this drive. It's almost like somebody challenged the wide receivers. They've made some tough catches over the middle. Yeah, they have. You know, and a good job of helping their quarterback out. You know, we mentioned we called out Chris Black a couple of possessions ago. How he needs to come up with a big catch. It would have been a first down. And back to back throws. Where Alabama's receivers stepping up big to come up with tough catches over the middle. Coker. Just as I try to give him a little bit of love, Cam Sims drops one. And again on third down, no less. And that's really where it's come. We were talking with Coach Kiffin yesterday. What do you need out of your quarterback? He needs to be able to make key throws, and again, this time with pressure in his face. But that's got to be caught. This ball's delivered. And Camp Sims, he's got to go up just a little bit, maybe a little bit behind him. Very catchable football. 
That should be a first down. We've seen now on a couple of possessions where Alabama should have been able to extend the drive. Good job by ULM of getting pressure on the passer. ULM will take a timeout. 8.34 to go here in the second quarter. Alabama punt team on the field. Yesterday to us, they lost a lot of quote unquote football savvy at that receiver position and they're asking guys to step up. J.K. Scott stands at the 35. Rashawn Caesar just outside the 10 yard line. On fourth down and about five from midfield. So Alabama will punt it away. Good high kick. Returnable for Caesar. But nowhere to go. He's dropped back at the 13. 38 yard punt. So ULM's offense coming on the field and I know it's as tough against this Alabama defense that's playing really well especially up front no room to run really hardly any time to throw the football but how do you try to generate a little bit of offense for a team that uh, has minus 13 rushing yards. Yeah they've made it so hard and how they've gotten to the minus 13 is it's really been Garrett Smith having to hang on to the football on his reads and their ground attack but the other side of it is. Alabama because they're so dominant up front they're able to play two safeties back so it's not like there's a whole lot of opportunity to stretch the field deep without safety help. Just nowhere to go. Caitlin Watson the sophomore ran right into Dalvin Tomlinson. And it's just you know we've seen teams that are committed to the inside to the ground game the Wisconsin's of this world. You're not getting more than about two and a half yards if you run inside versus Alabama. That's the average. And so far this season, it just isn't advisable to try them from tackle to tackle. Ollie oh, comes in motion. He'll swing it that way. Needs a block, doesn't get it, but still powers his way close to the 20. That'll be four yards shy of the first down. Fitzpatrick, that true freshman corner out of Old Bridge, New Jersey comes up to make the play. They're playing some young guys in that back end with Fitzpatrick, Burgess Becker, and Ronnie Harrison, three true freshmen. Of course, Marlon Humphrey, a red shirt freshman out of Hoover, getting a lot of snaps. They really like making Fitzpatrick. Well, they talked about how smart of a player he really is. Understands what they're trying to do in the back end. Warhawks 0 for 6 on third down. By an underneath throw, and that's just uh, read well, played well. And Jaden Holly makes the catch, gets a yard, but there's Gino Matias Smith, the senior out of Atlanta, making the play. A double barrel blitz right there in the inside. Reggie Raglan, who loves to get in those third downs. Sometimes they'll even line him up on the edge as a defensive end and let him come off and rush the passer. Number 19 for Alabama, a little bit banged up, it looked like coming off the field for the tie. Looks like it's going to be a fake. It is. Ciano with the catch and the first down out to the 25 yard line. That is their first first down of the game. And I guess, what the heck, you're down 14 nothing. Right. I mean, we've already <laughs> seen some adventures on the punt team. This is basically a screen pass. Alabama rushing hard upfield. They just dumped it right over right over the, the hands and shoulders of their shield. Nice completion and a conversion. As you mentioned, Dave, not the most orthodox way of doing it, but a way to extend the possession. They just barely got the first down by about a yard and a half. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 25 yard line. Four man front. And a flag comes in. Delay of game against ULM. Final charge timeout. Oh, they get the timeout. ULM. Our back judge threw the flag and signaled delay of game, but the timeout was before. And we'll take the timeout as well. And Alabama's defense has been nothing short of sensational today. That guy right there, a big part of it, Reggie Ragland. Yeah, he's a beast. I mean, if you're going to build a linebacker, it'd look a lot like Reggie Ragland. He takes it to the next level in that he can play inside the box but still has range at 6'2", 250 pounds. Can walk down mobile quarterbacks and play in coverage. 
one of those linebackers that can help you get sideline to sideline, but if it's a downhill running play, he's as rugged as any and will stick his face in the fan with the best of them and make running backs regret that he did. And diagnosis, his ability to recognize where the ball is going to end up and get downhill and make plays front up on running backs. You got a body like Reggie Raglan, he throws it around at will and can utilize, be utilized on third downs, first downs, second downs. This is a guy that you need in your defensive lineman just about the entire offensive possession. You don't have to take him off the field. First down and 10. 5.59 to go before halftime. Come near side. That pass is caught. Jalen Holly with the reception over the 30 to the 31 yard line. A gain of six. Fitzpatrick pushes him out of bounds. If you asked you know, earlier, so this is one of the things that ULM can get going. Flipping the ball out quickly, doing a good job of shaking tackles and getting blocks on the perimeter. Gain of five. Holly brought down by Ragland. And that'll be good enough for a conventional first down. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. No punt formation needed. More orthodox way of getting it done. There's Caesar. He's having a tough time getting it going today. That ball sailed on Garrett Smith a little bit. I wonder if he wasn't trying to get it to Jalen Holly on a quick now pass. We had a little quick pump fake, and that may have what been what brought Rush Rashawn Caesar open on this attempt. But off the mark on that delivery. So now it's second down and ten. Kalen Watson coming in motion to get the handoff, and he is hit hard by Ryan Anderson, who for a moment thought he might have been tossed out of this game for a targeting, but it was overturned. But Clearly it was a uh, I think you and I both agree that by the letter of the law and the rule that he's fortunate to be playing right now. Yes he is. Yeah. <laughs> the sp spirit of the game I can see how it wasn't an overly violent play. But as it is Anderson still in the lineup and making his presence felt for the tight defense. Third down and let's call it nine. Smith passes batted and almost picked off. Boy, Alabama just seems like they're playing with 13 or 14 guys back there today. Well, that's because they they have at least seven, almost always. Ashawn Robinson, once again, is showing such great leverage. You know, the quickest way to get to that quarterback is from these three technique and defensive tackle positions. That's the fastest way to get in an offensive backfield. And right now, Gibson Ty doing a good job of collapsing pockets. Boy, good kick by Qualls. Taken by Cyrus Jones. Covered well by the Warhawks. And out to the 32 yard line, a 39 yard punt. Well, the newest SEC storied film, In Search of Derek Thomas, premieres Tuesday at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, presented by Belk on the SEC ESPN Network and streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. You and I were talking about Derek last night. What a player he was. I mean, uh, I, one of the best ever, if not best defensive players ever. He was amazing. I mean, you look at a guy like a Derek Thomas, and you're talking, you know, the Lawrence Taylors of this world. This is a guy that changes offensive game plans. And if you didn't come in knowing where De Derek Thomas was and having a Derek Thomas plan, you had a long day on offense. Seven sack performance yes. at one time and one that's just it's unbelievable. This is first professional line. Coker's pass out to the 36 yard line, a gain of four. That's caught Derrick Henry. And you look at the numbers now for Coker. He is uh, 10 out of 19. One touchdown, one interception. Henry gets a couple of yards out of that clock goes under four minutes. Not a lot of running room that time on the zone. That time ULM dialing up a rundown blitz filling 
both of those gaps on either side of Ryan Kelly the center for Alabama. Not a lot of running room for big number two to get going. So now it's third down. Melanie in motion. Here's Coker. That pass is almost picked off on the far side. Ridley looked like he slipped Caldwell in the coverage, and now it's fourth down. And that time, you know, one of what seems to be Jacob Coker's favorite targets, Mullaney, was open underneath. For a sure first down. That time, though, Trey Caldwell does a great job of coming over Calvin Ridley. And you see Mullaney there running free over the middle and right over the ball, but Coker was already headed towards Calvin Ridley. Back to back targets for number three. Great job by the Warhawk defense getting the football back for its offense with three and a half to play. J.K. Scott will punt it to Caesar. Looks like Alabama got a timeout. Nick Saban not too happy about something. He's about five or six yards out on the field and he's got that look. That you don't really want to see if you're on the field. Nah, Bob, I tell you what, I mean, part of it has to be outside of an 11 play drive, 10 of them on the ground in a short field. This offense has, has largely struggled to gain any traction. Time out on the field. Let's get an update. Let's go to the studios in Dari. All right, guys, thank you much. We'll see you on the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Dari, Chris, Booker. Casey Smith will be standing by with Nick Saban. We'll get his take on things. We'll update Tennessee and Florida. And running backs running wild. That's what this league is, right? All about running back. Great time to love if you love running games, man. On yet another big day. Quit smiling, Book. We'll see you at halftime. <laughs> why, why would Book be so excited? Oh, he played at LSU. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just wonder why he's so excited. By the way, Booker's always smiling. Yes, he is. Nick Saban not smiling right now. And I think you hit on a couple of good points, really. Uh, an extremely short field for one of their touchdowns and they had a nice 11 play drive 10 of those on the ground but that's been it for Alabama. Scott's punt will bounce inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line. 44 yard kick three. You look at Jay Coker his team leading 14 to nothing coaches telling us yesterday in our meetings this is his show. But Jake's got to make some plays, and I think sometimes he might be forcing it a bit. Yeah, and you know, part of it is, you know, is he pressing? Well, he's pressing sometimes when he's being pressured, trying to deliver the football, knowing you can't step in the throws. It happened last week versus Ole Miss. And then again here today, pressure right in his face, trying to unload the football downfield again, that time targeting Calvin Ridley. Jake Coker is a guy that they need to really step up. And at the same time, allow the game to come to him. Don't make those throws that are not necessary and putting the football in harm's way. Smith. What do you think's going through his mind? Here he is, a red shirt freshman. He played Georgia in week one, and Nichols had a great game through for 370. Now he's looking at these guys through two quarters of football. This has got to be like his worst nightmare. Well, I tell you what, right now it's a two touchdown game. You know, you're looking at it. On the road, you've come in here and done virtually nothing offensively. Your first down off of, off of a fake punt. And they haven't gotten much going, and yet your team's still very much in the game. Dropped at the 17 yard line. Garrett Smith hit by Deshaun Hand, another one of those outstanding front seven players for the Crimson Tide. That'll go down as a sack, and that'll be number two for Deshaun Hand this year. Once again, we're forcing Warhawk quarterback Garrett Smith to end up with the football in some of these rushing attempts, registered as a sack, but pushing him down and behind him the down and distance, and certainly off schedule. We'll swing it. Your side, nowhere to go for Watson maybe a yard and now you're looking at fourth down the best news of all at this point. Well not good news now I think Alabama's going to use a timeout to stop the clock I was about to say the best news this clock can just keep running for ULM but Nick Saban takes a timeout with 214 to go as ULM set to punt it away. 
Well, tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern on the SEC ESPN Network, SEC Rewind flashes back to the 2008 Ole Miss Florida football game, which changed the season for both teams and led to Tim Tebow's memorable post-game speech. It's also available on the Watch ESPN app. What a game that was. I happen to have called that one down in the swamp, and it was one of those where you just didn't see it coming, but Ole Miss kept hanging around. And about the third quarter, he started going, this might happen. Right, right. Well, you know what? It's weird, but I'm sure that's what happened with the players, yeah. too, in their mind, thinking, you know what? Hey, we can win this game. It takes a while sometimes for that to really cement it in your mind. But, you know, certainly you talk about galvanizing losses. That was one of those types of losses for that Florida team. Chris Walls stands inside his five. Cyrus Jones at the 45 yard line. He will make the catch on the run and he is in ULM territory at the 48 yard line. 34 yard punt, 206 on the clock. So a short field for Alabama. Neither team has any timeouts left. A great opportunity though for Lane Kiffin. And his quarterback, Jake Coker, to engineer a drive. A 50-yard football field with two minutes to play. Plenty of time. And as we mentioned, it's been very much uh, up and down performance offensively. Very choppy so far. Some pressure comes. Coker trying to get out of trouble. says he can't run to the 42 yard line a gain of six Justin Backus chases him down Coker was certainly opportunistic with his legs a week ago a couple of key scrambles and converted a third down with his legs this time kept his eyes downfield Johnson with another pressure Coker makes a man miss gets to the 40 yard line picks up about a yard and a half clock still moving at 129 Jaron Johnson with the stop for ULM. And an injured Warhawk back at the 45 yard line. That looks like Michael Johnson, their senior outside backer who has made so many plays for them. Leads them in tackles with 16 coming into the game. Led him last year with 16 tackles behind the line and eight sacks. Looks like he's got a brace on one knee and a pretty sizable bandage on the other. Good to see him make it off the field under his own power. Got the pressure that forced Coker out of the pocket on the previous attempt. And the clock starts. Third down and three. Alabama two out of eight on third downs today. Drake is dropped. Make it three out of nine today. Also lost a shoe, it looks like. At that time, you know, they were going with a counter or a power play to the play side. David Griffith does a good job coming underneath the block of O.J. Howard and going for it. On fourth down, Coker under pressure. Hit, and it'll be incomplete, and ULM stands up here. Alabama had a short field and couldn't pick up the first down with 47 seconds left. The Warhawks have the football. I think they're going to end up crossing the linebackers. They come right here. A little bit of confusion in the protection. And you've got a true freshman in there, and Damian Harris, number 34, trying to pick up a double barrel blitz right there. Both linebackers coming in the same gap. And it's pick your poison. David Griffith got in there to pressure Jake Coker. Virtually no time to operate in that passing pocket. Travis Niekamp and Adam Wall, the co-defensive coordinators for ULM, have to be pretty happy with the way their group has played today. Smith will swing it. Caught by Watson, and he's out of bounds at the 45. And a flag comes in. Reuben Foster with the hit on Watson, who went flying over there in the bench, and that may be for a late hit. 
Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense, number 10. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Tell you what, that's big. You see Reuben Foster didn't let up. You know, once he's in the white, you've got to pull up. You can't take a shot on a guy. That's a free 15 yards now. And the penalties have been an issue. They've come up. And with 37 seconds, now you've got on the fringe of field goal opportunities. Smith incomplete at the 38 yard line, looking for a Jalen Holly. And now another injured player. This one. Alabama. This big Jonathan Allen, I think. And he's holding that left shoulder. One of the key anchors to what Alabama does defensively on that front. We talk about how deep they are. He's holding that shoulder. I didn't see him go to the ground. It was just pass rushing. He was lined up as a defensive end. He was just rushing the passer versus Ray Balthazar. But he took a shot, and I wonder if his shoulder popped out or subluxated. It came out briefly, but he's limping off. See, he'll come in on an inside move and watch the shot on his left shoulder, which is what it looked like he was holding. He just drops that left arm and holds it. Yeah, I wonder if that arm, if that shoulder didn't slide out. Frank Sutton Jr. at the guard spot gave him a good shot. He's heading back to the locker room. Only 31 seconds to play before intermission. Empty set for Smith. Pump fakes going up top. Boy, he had a man and missed him. A Jalen Holly was just a half a step behind that footballer. That could have been a big play inside the red zone. Well, another. In a busted. This time. You see Ronnie Harrison. He jumped up field. And the safety help was coming over late. From Gino Matthias Smith. Huge missed opportunity there. Third down and 10. 24 seconds on the clock. Smith throws it up in the air, looking for Caesar well out of bounds. And with 16 seconds left, why not take one more shot, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're looking at it, and now you're able to get a quick possession. The personal foul gets you an extra 15 across midfield. On that previous play, though, what a big miss to Jalen Holly. You make that completion. You've got a chance to take a couple of shots at the end zone on a certain field goal attempt if you protect the football. ULM has a couple of first downs here in the first half, but they've been 0 for 10 on third downs today. They're looking at a fourth down and 10 here. They are one out of two on fourth downs. That's batted up in the air and picked off. Matias Smith. To the 40 and drop there with six seconds, make it five seconds to play a 15 yard return. And the first interception of the year for the senior out of Atlanta. Well, whenever you're an offensive coach or player and a ball goes up in the air in the middle of the secondary, everyone holds their breath. Because you already know as that ball is released, the defense is converging, the ball's behind. And tipped up. And Matias Smith, the recipient of that tip ball, and Kai defense is able to escape what could have otherwise been a, a, a field goal attempt. And if the completion was made two plays ago, maybe even a shot at the end zone. So Alabama with five seconds. They just hand it off to Drake. See if he can create a little bit of offense. Break thrown down at midfield. So that'll do it for the first half. Tell you what, Jay Coker, 10 of 21 for 80 yards. Alabama has 166 yards of offense to 37 for ULM. We'll hear from Casey Smith and Coach Nick Saban coming up on the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. But time for us to get to the studio with Dari.
All right, guys. Dave, thank you very much. It is 14 nothing, as you suggest. Alabama leading ULM 14 to nothing. We are moments away from third quarter football here at Bryant Denny Stadium. And well, we talked about at the top of the show that this Alabama offense needs to try to find an identity. That's something the coaches were telling us. They want to find out what they do well. Well, I guess there are some spots you could pick. They ran the ball well. They threw it well. A couple of drives defensively. They've been stellar. What do you make of this? I guess turnaround game from last weekend for Alabama after two quarters. It's been disjointed at best. I mean, when you look at it, there, there have been some issue, issues with the punting game even, and it's kind of set up a short football field for ULM that gave Alabama their second scoring opportunity. They staged a nice drive, and it was about 10 rushing plays that got it going on the legs of Derrick Henry, and unsurprisingly so, an offensive line getting off and running downhill and powering that offensive possession. Those are your two scores in this game, and that's really been the story outside of the defensive dominance that, frankly, was anticipated coming into this game. The negative nine rushing yards for UL Monroe, I can't say is that shocking, given the way Alabama's played defense and the way the Warhawks have struggled on the ground. But the story has been Alabama offensively and their inability to sustain drives, convert third downs, get some completions on second and third when passing situations. That's been the question mark that remains. Paul well off of the turn. He's to the 15, out to the 19-yard line, an 18-yard return. With that, let's go down to the sidelines, bring in Casey Smith. Dave, I talked to ULM head coach Todd Berry right after halftime, and I asked him, how are you happy with their overall effort? He said, look, we're getting manhandled on the line of scrimmage. We have got to start controlling that. He said a lot of the young guys are making mental mistakes, and this is all part of the journey of having such a young team. He said in the kicking game, they're making mistakes, but that we might be able to see some more of those fake punts in the second. Yeah, why not? Down 14 nothing, not having a whole lot of offense. Throw the whole book at him, right? It's not often that you get a head coach telegraphing more fake points. <laughs> yeah, that might be a first. Yeah. And here is a flag. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men in the formation. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, not how you want to draw it up on first play out of the locker room. Uh, Barry giving somebody an earful. You could see, you know, he's calling plays from the sideline. Coming into the season, he's kind of curious how that was going to shake out. Hadn't called plays for a couple of years. Got to be frustrating as a play call. Looking for a Jalen Holly around the 20-yard line. Just trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll fall incomplete. Reggie Ragland on the coverage for the Crimson Tide. Alabama ran 42 plays in the first half. 175 yards of offense on the flip side 36 plays for ULM and 37 yards of offense uh, it's just been so difficult for ULM to get anything going offensively these empty backfield sets with little run play here's Caesar over the middle out to the 23 that's a gain of 10 but that'll bring up a third down at about seven Reuben Foster making the catch and boy if that's uh, Rashawn Caesar Holding that right ankle. Oh boy. You talk about a blow to an offense that finds itself still in the game. As we've mentioned, and only only a two score game, but there really has been little to no threat from the Warhawk offense. Had an opportunity right there at the end of the first half, but unable to capitalize. And if Rashawn Caesar comes out of the lineup, that's a big Sean Caesar being carted off here at Bryant Denny Stadium. Take another look at uh, what happened to their best offensive weapon on the tackle. You can see his, his right foot, the, the toe of his right foot, looked like Dave digs into the turf right here, and then it just rolls to the right. An ankle injury. He didn't put any weight on it on his way to the park. Over the middle pass is caught. That'll be good enough for a first down at the 33-yard line. That goes to a Jalen Holly. Fitzpatrick on the coverage there. 
Nice time for Garrett Smith to step into that throw, and he fires a dart in there for Jalen Holly, who now really has to step up as a receiver in Rashawn Caesar's absence. And no R.J. Turner, a true freshman receiver, they're very high on. He is out for this game as well. So down in numbers at the wide receiver position for ULM. Empty set. Smith would run it himself. Not going to get a whole lot against that front wall of Alabama. I'll give him two. Denzel Duvall with his second tackle today. It'll be so challenging for them to find a lot of running room, although on the injury to Caesar, wide open in the defensive front for Alabama. A couple of wide techniques over the guards and both linebackers virtually outside of the box. That time, though, good job by collapsing back inside, forced the second and long, something that ULM has spent a lot of time in today. Four man rush over the middle. Holly wants a flag, and here it comes. Reuben Foster was hanging on the back of that jersey, and a couple of flags come in. Pass interference. Defense, number 10. That's a spot foul with an automatic first down. That's a favorable matchup. You've got Reuben Foster on a Jalen Holly. That's where Rashawn Caesar was lined up before. Linebacker on a receiver. Reuben Foster's an athlete. That's a tough matchup, though, when you're working on a receiver. He's going to come underneath him. He Coach. definitely got the hook on him, didn't he? Yes, he did. Hard, hard to miss that in the middle of the field. But Coach has said Reuben played really well last week against Ole Miss. Kaylin Watson with three yards off the right side. Let's get an update with Casey. Dave, I'm being told that Alabama defensive lineman Jonathan Allen will be out for the game with a shoulder injury. He will be back on the sidelines wearing a sling. Allen came into this game with three sacks to lead Alabama. And as you uh, described when we saw the replay, it just looked like it was awkward. Got twisted the wrong way on that shoulder. Yeah, I've had a shoulder injury for the same reason. Holly to midfield. That's a gain of five. That'll bring up a third down and two. Well, right now, Garrett Smith doing a good job delivering the football, getting it out of his hands. We've seen him hang on to the ball a little bit, coverage downfield, nowhere to go. And eventually that tight front constricts that pocket, ends up getting the quarterback on the ground. Now they're getting the ball quickly out of his hands to set up a third and manageable. Smith will try to run for it, not even close. Back to the line of scrimmage, and now you're looking at fourth down at about two. So what are you thinking here if you're the head coach? I think we've already seen Todd Berry. He, he'll go for it. He's one of those guys that is not scared to roll the dice on fourth down. But early, I guess, in this second half, he's saying we can still play field position. And in some ways, this is a commentary on what Alabama's been able to get going on offense. Who's to, say, back. who's to say they won't have a fake here? As he mentioned to Casey that they might bring out a couple of fakes here in the second half. Fair catch called for. Ball hit the defensive player right in the back. And a flag comes in. Wesley Thompson was down there for ULM trying to make a play. Didn't realize the punt was so short. Kick catch interference on the kicking team, number 32. That's a 15 yard penalty. First down. I think you hit it on the head, Dave. I don't think Wesley Thompson had any idea where the ball was. A clear and easy call for the officials that time, certainly interfering with the kick. Hey, tonight at 10.30, right here on the SEC ESPN Network, be sure to join our network analysts as they discuss all the SEC news of the day on SEC Now, presented by Hardee's. You can also catch that on your Watch ESPN app. If you don't have that, be sure to download it now. If you have a cable, satellite provider, it's free. Why not? It's like magic. 
<laughs> it's unbelievable. It's like a living room in the First down and 10 for the Tide. Under center is Coker. They use Drake off the right side. Well, he is so hard to tackle one on one. And a flag, a couple of flags come in late. Oh, really uncharacteristic. I mean, Mitch Lane's a leader for ULM, and they're going to get him for a personal foul, tussling with Drake in the sideline. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number seven, 15 yard penalty, first down. And it wasn't, you know, this isn't to make the tackle. You know, sometimes you see that it's after the play. It's wow. Completely unnecessary, right there in front of the officials, and probably born of frustration. Preseason first team all Sun Belt performer, a four year starter, as you mentioned, a real leader in the back of a veteran defensive unit for ULM. First down and 10. Here's Drake trying to go to the wide side of the field. He turns the corner. First down at the 30 and falls forward after the 28 yard line. A 15 yard pickup before Lorenzo Jackson brings, brings him down. Once again, finding some running room to the left side. They're able to capture the edge. Drake outruns pursuit. Calvin Ridley, number three, gets a great block downfield on Trey Caldwell. When you get these edge perimeter runs, the big plays happen when your receivers block well downfield. Here's Drake, left side. Inside the 25, down to the 24. Three yard pickup for Kenyon Drake. The senior out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Averaging just shy of six yards a carry. Drake now with 10 carries. 64 yards on the ground. He's an explosive playmaker and a versatile one at that. Coach Saban sat him down and said, just let this game happen. You feel like you're pressing a little bit a week ago. Incredibly talented player. Stewart makes a man miss, takes it down to the 10 yard line. And it feels like maybe the best rhythm we've seen this offense in. You know, it's not an overly long drive here, but mix and run pass, moving the football. An eligible player downfield, number 74 on the offense. <laughs> the five yard penalty remains second half. I chuckle because Nick Saban has been on this lineman downfield. <laughs> Rant, and rightfully so. And they get whistled for it. He sent a couple of plays in, at least one in particular last week against Ole Miss, and now they get flagged for it. Uh, you know, coming into the season, it was going to be emphasized. You get three yards past the line of scrimmage. And the ball's in the air and released. Where's that offensive lineman? They're saying Cam Robinson off that play action fake. The line, the line play and offensive lineman have been given a lot of latitude on being downfield. And that's the first one that I'm aware of in the game we covered, especially where that's been called. Here comes some heat. Coker pump fakes over the middle, a little bit under throw, looking for Stewart again around the 15. And now it'll be third down and 11. You said it. A little bit of pressure. He's starting to get bodies in and around him. We've seen Jake Coker deliver the football under duress before, resulted and an interception in the first half that time had to hang on to it and may have missed his initial passing window to deliver. Well, not a first, a uh, third down conversion clinic today. Three for 21 combined. Four man rush coming near side. Pass is caught in the fingertips around the 18 yard line. So that'll be a yard and a half shy of the first down. Darius Stewart with another grab. Great catch. You want that ball out a little bit sooner and give him a chance to turn up. And that's if he ran the route at the right depth. As you see as Stewart, the, the pass carries him out of bounds and leaves him shy of the first down yardage. So now it's fourth down in a yard. Alabama one out of two today on fourth downs. They got that overload look that they ran on the goal line that resulted in a touchdown. And a flag comes in as Drake got the handoff at a false start against Alabama. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 50, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. 
Well, this happens. This is the exact same play. They're going to run power to the overload side, and Alphonse Taylor is the puller. And sometimes you get a little twitchy. You see late getting down was the ULM defensive tackle, and that might have been just enough to trigger Alphonse Taylor and now bring on the field goal unit. Adam Griffith, who has struggled this year, one out of five, a 40 yard attempt from the near hash. His lone make was from 20. And this one is through, and you hear the crowd. Excited that maybe Adam Griffith is back connecting on field goals because they could certainly use him. DQ. Try the new DQ Bakes Hot Desserts a la Mode menu today. Boy, look at the Bryant Museum here in Tuscaloosa. And I, it's got all Alabama stuff in there. But listen, if you're a college football fan, you got to come see this. The history. It's not just Alabama, it's the history of college football. Yeah, no, I mean, Alabama is a big part of the fabric of college football. Through the end zone, touchback after the 25. Let's go back uh, a few moments. Nick Saban really hot under the collar because of this play, this alignment downfield. This was Nick Saban, by the way, during the commercial break. Matt Leffler, our referee, and he was discussing, uh, we're guessing that Lineman downfield is the topic of conversation, and this is why. Well, and, and so you'll take a look at, well, here's the 20-yard line right here. And what will be interesting to see is, you know, the ball is on the 23. They're just, so, just past it. And you watch number 74 and number 71, and the ball is out. I mean, as loosely as this has been called all season long, I've seen some guys that are five yards downfield. Yes. And the quarterback still got the ball in his hands. And here's another flag. I think it just underscores, Dave, how hard it is to yeah. make that call. And at the same time, it's changing the way defenses are playing. Ball start on the offense, number 75. Five yard penalty, first down. And Matt, that, that play generally that people are, are, are really critical about is is that run pass option play Auburn uses it all the time we saw Ole Miss last week use it that was just a straight pass there was no run pass option on that nah. you rarely see that call it was off of a play action fake you're right you know, a lot of times it's easy easier anyway I think for them to see it when it's off just a pure play action as opposed to those reads high throw batted in the air it goes incomplete Parker Barino. Excuse me, that was Trey Perrier. Out in the route for ULM. Second down now. First down line, 35 yard line. First downs have been hard to come by for ULM. To start out their last drive with a false start. They're able to overcome it and pick up a first. Bat in the air, almost picked off again. Another tip pass. Boy, this is two weeks in a row that this Alabama defensive front has really done a lot of damage with getting their arms up in the air. Well, that time was big Jaron Reed, number 90. That's a big by the fact that that's basically defying gravity. If you can get 315 pounds to even leave the ground at all, it just shows how explosive you really are. That defensive front does as good a job as any, getting their hands up and getting in the passing lanes. ULM looking at third down and long, third down and 15. They are one for 12 on third downs. They set up a screen and it is read beautifully and a big time hit. Coming from Ronnie Harrison, the true freshman out of Tallahassee, Florida. Ronnie Harrison saw it all the way. And as soon as the release happened, out right out of the backfield, watching him, Ronnie Harrison. And as soon as Kalen Watson releases upfield, he's underneath the block and chooses to give him a nice kiss there right underneath the chin as opposed to, hey, he almost could have made that reception. He arrived on the spot. Qualls punting again. To Cyrus Jones. Good high kick. Jones. 
Another interference on the catch. Flags come out. Loose football. Yeah, it looked like Tevin Kagans came down there. Last time it was Wesley Thompson, I believe. It's back to back punts now. Kick catch interference on the kicking team, number 33. That's a 15 yard penalty. First down. I wonder part of it, Dave, you know, it looks like Cyrus Jones, I don't think he's misjudging it necessarily, but on both punts, it's like he's hanging back and then he steps into the catch, kind of late, lurches forward. Both times, you end up with a kick catch interference. You don't see that call very often. This is back to back now. The first one, I think, unfortunate. Defensive player didn't have any idea it was such a short punt, hit him in the back, but come on, you know number five's trying to make a play. You got to get out of the way. Give an opportunity to catch it. He's right in front of you, right? Yeah, uh, both of those poor judgment. Alabama, excellent field position now at the 40 yard line. Coker, 11 of 23, 90 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Damian Harris in it running back. He'll give it to the freshman off the left side. He's to the 37 yard line. That's how they got the last possession going. Running left, outside zone runs behind Big Cam Robinson, capturing the edge. First carry for Damian Harris. We've seen him in there on a number of other plays, largely in pass protection. Now able to get the ball. First down for Alabama. 13 yard pickup. You can see ULM, they stemmed late right as Alabama was snapping the football, but all game long, the Crimson Tide has done an excellent job, especially when they're running outside. That's what it sounds like when you hit the uh, microphone on the sidelines. <laughs> That's what it sounds like in your helmet. <laughs> Out of the pistol formation on first down. They'll go with Henry this time. Derek to the 20 and swallowed up there after a gate of three. Great job. Great job by our audio guys. I want to do an inside look. Sacrificing the parade for the viewer experience. Is it, gonna, is it staying in the game or is it injured? It looks injured. Okay, we're a little banged up, but we're going to go with it. It's a flush wound. It's a crab <laughs> wound. Second down. 6.20 to go, third quarter. Derrick Henry, 13 carries, 52 yards. Drake leads the way, rushing with 65. Damian Harris is your tailback, but they'll come near side. Michael Nightswander. Nice move with the five touchdown. Hey, he looked a little bit like Kenyon Drake with the move at the five. I, I almost mistaked him for Kenyon <laughs> Drake. Well, part of it was, you know, they start out lined up, they end up in the I formation. Kind of a boring formation, throwback, you know. You don't see that a lot anymore. The only other time was on the goal line run. That time, though, it worked out to perfection and ending up in the end. Went after by Griffith is up and it is good. Yeah, a little old school throwback, maybe. Alabama doesn't see a whole lot of these sets anymore. Nice winder certainly loves it. A senior out of Hoover, Alabama. You see, he starts out in the slot and he's going to motion back into the backfield. It's more of a traditional eye formation. You got your tight end, OJ Howard, there attached at the end of the line of scrimmage. This looks like a play from 30 years ago. Play action fake, and get your fullback out of the backfield. Nice winder does the rest. They did a good job on the power run on the goal line for Derrick Henry in the first half, leading up in there as a fullback. Justin Fowler's a guy that we haven't talked a lot about. 
they've been missing missing him. You'll see a lot of fullback role in this offense. But nice wanders come in handy. Oh, that is Rashawn Caesar. We saw him get injured earlier. That right ankle area. They carted him off to the other end of the field, and he got injured for X-rays. And now they're bringing him back to the ULM side of the field in their locker room. Boy, I hope that young man is not seriously injured. He is uh, such a big part of what they try to do. And such an excellent football player. Enjoyed watching him against Georgia in week one. He caught him 13 times. A big return by Caldwell out to the 30 yard line. Well, let's head to the studio, get an update. Dari. Guys, keeping an eye on what's going on at the swap where they're going into the fourth quarter. Late third, Kelvin Taylor into the end zone. And Florida pulls to within six. Keep an eye on what Tennessee can do down the stretch. They could use this one, guys. After the play was un over, personal foul, late hit, number 33 on the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Boy, ULM is somewhat self-destructing here with some of these penalties. Special teams penalties, that's two now on Tevin King. He's had the kick catch interference. And now after the play, taking a free shot on somebody. Certainly not what you want to see out of your players on the field. And maybe you misjudged the punt, but it's not hard to figure out when the play is over. That'll back ULM up to the 15-yard line. Dante McNeil in it running back. Minus five yards rushing for the Warhawks. Go back to that personal foul. You'll see there's see Tevin K right there as he kind of came and took a free shot. Circled around of that doing it right in front of the official. You know, personal foul is the perfect name for that. It's just it's perfect. You're, you're, you're basically saying I'm more important. I'm going to make this a personal decision. 15 yards. That's a first down and a half. That's a big deal. Now it's second down. Smith throws off his back leg off the bench area and this has really been a struggle for ULM just to kind of get any momentum going. Smith now 15 of 32, 68 yards. Total offense today, 68 yards for the Warhawks. It's just been when you watch it, you know, there's no ground game to speak of. They knew that was going to be a challenge. But knowing that you can control the box from tackle to tackle with really three or four defenders, it opens up so much to you defensively. It makes that perimeter game that much more challenging. And without Caesar, you're all the more or less threatening. That's Holly in motion. Smith trying to run for it. And one, two, three, four, five crimson jerseys as soon as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's like a defensive conference, roll call. These guys are just collapsing in on it, knowing that the coverage is downfield, and you're piling up assists. i just thinking, how about ULM starts their schedule? Two of their first three games are Georgia, at Georgia and at Alabama. Yeah, brutal. Oh, man. Two, two of their 13 scheduled games, as you mentioned earlier. To get the extra regular season game because he'll travel off to Hawaii in late November. Return from Cyrus Jones gets it into ULM territory at the 44 yard line, a 32 yard punt. And Alabama leading it 24 to nothing with 422 to play here in the third quarter. 24 nothing, Alabama out in front, trying to add to their point total here. Good field position at the 44 yard line. Tonight on the SEC ESPN Network, SEC play will take center stage, 25th ranked Missouri and the Kentucky Wildcats live from the Bluegrass. 7.30 Eastern time exclusively on the SEC ESPN Network and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Should be a lot of fun in Lexington tonight. Let's go downstairs, visit with Casey.
Dave, Missouri head coach Gary Pinkle told Maria Taylor, who will be on the sidelines tonight for that game, that Matty Mock will get the start and that they're not worried about him. They know he's good under pressure and he plays better with his back against the wall. But that backup quarterback Drew Locke will be in the game. They want to see him play a series in the first and second half and see what happens. Thanks, Casey. I tell you what, this has been a quiet afternoon here at Bryant Denny Stadium, Alabama, trying to rebound from that disappointing loss that ended early Sunday morning for the Ole Miss Rebels. Quiet first half of football, not much in terms of big plays, but Alabama's found a way to lead it 24 to nothing. 422 to go in the third quarter. Dave Neal, Matt Stinchcomb, Casey Smith with you. Pocket collapses big time. And there goes Coker. He'll be dropped. Let's see where they spot it. Back at the 47 and a half yard line. Vanagu, first one there, but it, nearly everybody on that defensive front made an appearance. A loss of eight. Tell you what, you don't say this very often, but he, he comes underneath Cam Robinson right now. And I'm wondering if there was a miscommunication, a little bit late off the ball at left tackle. It wasn't loud in here. But even the right tackle, Dominic Jackson, looked like he was a little bit late as well. Some snap count issues, but that time, as it is, a sack. A slip it to Cam Sims, who gets it back into ULM territory. It's a gain of about four and a half. Boy, you just don't see Cam Robinson. Beat like that very often. I mean, that's a rarity. He was he was beat off the snap. You know, he didn't never got out of his stance. Uh, so it's a reason, not an excuse. Yeah. It's one of those where the Mario Cristobal is not going to take a whole lot of credibility for that one. He's not going to say, "Hey, okay, fine, no, it's okay." He gave up the sack. But physically, one of the more talented and gifted tackles in this conference at left tackle for Alabama is Ben Robinson. Ryan Kelly, the center, barking out signals up front for Alabama. Coker has to tuck the football, and he'll be dropped again. That's a loss of four on the play. Two sacks on that series for the Warhawks defense. Caleb Tucker getting in on the action. I'll tell you, though, Dave, I mean, you've got seven men in in the, in the protection, and your running backs end up checking out later. Nowhere to go with the football. Get rid of it. Three straight sacks. That time, Caleb Tucker getting in on the action. Three passes, three tackles for loss, and sacks. Junior Williams with a fair catch inside the 15-yard line. So ULM will have it backed up. 2.14 to go in the third quarter. Well, the newest SEC storied film, In Search of Derek Thomas, premieres Tuesday at 9 o'clock Eastern, presented by Belk right here on the SEC ESPN Network, and it's also streaming live on Watch ESPN. You do not want to miss that one. A life ended way too early. We talk about his football accolades, but those that knew Derek Thomas said he was that much better off the field and what he did for the community and those around him. Well, that's, that's a remarkable statement. I mean, I'll tell you what, there's no higher praise in that regard because he was a tremendous football player. Here's Smith. He's getting to know the defensive front from Alabama quite well. That time it was Darren Payne, the true freshman right in the middle of that defense out of Birmingham, Alabama, another 315-pounder. How about all their nose guards check in at 315? Like you can't play at 313 or 316. you got to be 315. Even. Nice and, nice and even. <laughs> you know, I think those are underreported numbers. I mean, you look at those guys. If Reggie Ragland is 250 pounds, then there's no way that Darren Payne's only 315. Here goes Watson. Take it out over the 15 to the 17 yard line. They'll spot his forward progress there. Gate of four. Reggie Raglan with his third tackle today. Enjoy talking with old Reggie yesterday, the senior out of Madison, Alabama. They call him Uncle Reg. <laughs> well, he had a chance. He could, he could have been playing on Sundays this year. Well, he decided to come back. He said, I want a backup plan. I want to get my degree. I want to be a businessman one day. I know my playing days will end. I'll tell you what, this is kind of type of talent that can play for a long, long time. Third down. 
pass caught out at the 25-yard line. They'll spot it inside the 25, but still good enough for the first down. Trey Perrier with the seven-yard reception. Credit ULM and Garrett Smith. They're keeping their head in this thing. They're without their biggest weapon out wide, Rashawn Caesar. You hadn't seen a whole lot of frustration out of them on the offensive side of the football, just staying with it, chopping wood, trying to get something going. Great catch on the other end of that Garrett Smith pass. Wide side of the field throw. They're just asking Holly to go make a play. There were three defenders and one blocker in front of them. So <laughs> you're asking Holly to do something that not many can do, a loss of two on the play. Yeah, you look at those, and you're hoping for a missed tackle. Maybe your receivers get a block in front. Holly able to maybe shake one of them. Well, Alabama last week versus Ole Miss had a couple of those on those now passes, those quick throws right out to the sideline. And you're one broken tackle away from a big gainer. Four-man rush for Smith running for it again. Able to turn the corner. I'll spot it right back at the line of scrimmage. The original line of scrimmage. So now that'll bring up third down. Garrett Smith. I'll tell you what, that jersey is remarkably clean looking considering how many shots he's taken. He's ended up on the ground quite a bit today. Zero rushing That's the yards. End of the third quarter. For ULM through three quarters. 79 yards of total offense. Looking at another third down when we come back. First three quarters belong to Alabama. It's 24 zip. Alabama leading ULM 24 to nothing after three quarters of play. Moments away from the start of the fourth quarter. Give us a chance to update our conference standings. Brought to you by Hardee's. Boy, Georgia sitting there at 4-0, looking really good. LSU, what can you say about them and Leonard Fournette? Ole Miss coming here last week. This could be some kind of race. I think that's what you say about LSU, right? Just Leonard Fournette. Yeah, right. Let's talk about LSU. <laughs> Leonard <laughs> Fournette. Most yards through three games by a running back. Over 600 yards. The most in 15 years. Unbelievable. Over the middle, Holly can't hang on on third down. He would have had the first down. Oh. Uh, looked to me that Ronnie Harrison had slipped down. He slid right behind Reuben Foster. And Ronnie Harrison, who was coming down, you see him there, he was on the ground, just got to come up with that catch. Garrett Smith working that pocket. And we've seen some drops in this game. That would have been a big one to convert and maintain that possession. As it is, you find yourself back on the sideline. This defense for Alabama has dominated this game. O line drive, fielded by Jones. And there's the whistle as he is thrown back inside the 40, but his forward progress will be at the 45 yard line, a 30 yard punt. And here comes the Alabama offense. Now let's see if they stay with Jake Coker at quarterback here to start the fourth quarter. They mentioned wanting to see some other guys. Well, wanting to get some guys in. That hadn't been the case here. It's been so inconsistent offensively. It makes sense, I think, to yeah. keep Jake Coker out there. Especially knowing what's in store next week. And that is uh, packing your bags and heading to Athens, Georgia. I mean, this this will be considered a long drive for this half. The average drive starts from the 49 plus side of the field. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe Damian Harris on the carry there. Offside. Defense, number 49, five-yard penalty, first down. Banigou. Banigou was the one who was able to beat Cam Robinson off the snap earlier, get a sack in the previous possession, three straight sacks versus Alabama's offense. That time penalized for being in the neutral zone. Chris Black goes in motion. Coker looking to that side of the field and hits Black at the 45-yard line. Gain of eight and a half, maybe nine. Mitch Lane chasing him down. You know, this is a, a, a question, I think, as you move forward about Alabama and their pass game. Obviously, 
Coker needs to make those throws, but you got to have some guys step up now. Without Robert Foster, this wasn't a really deep group to begin with. Now so, you miss your main guy. No question. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about in that passing game, I think Harris is able to pick up the yard he's needed, first down. You've got to have some reliable guys on the other end of it. You know, Richard Mullaney has kind of exploded on the scene as a guy who's just entered the program in his last year of eligibility. And he's been targeted numerous times. The guys are going to have to step up. Our Darius Stewart, he's going to have to ramp up his production. Calvin Ridley. There's Black. Just kind of settles in in that zone. Still on his feet to the 25, down to the 24-yard line. Chris Black was the next guy who was going to rattle off as they snapped the football. Nice run after that catch. Slant on the far side. Cam Sims makes the catch. We saw Alabama in their first touchdown drive of the game where they ran it 10 of 11 times. Really fast pace, up tempo. We haven't seen that kind of speed uh, until really this drive here. Yeah, you know, they, they tried it at times. You know, they jumped into it, saw it in the first quarter a couple of times. But the truth is, I think they're looking to just sustain some drives at this point. Here comes some heat, Coker. A little pressure, batted in the air. Falls harmlessly to the turf. Well, that time, two crossing patterns underneath. Great versus man coverage. That time, though, didn't look like Chris Black was really looking for that ball. The red zone's been a tough spot. You know, everything happens a little bit quicker. The field's condensed. Struggled a little bit in that passing game in this area of the field. Third down and five coming up. Coker now 16 of 29 on the afternoon. Going to the corner. Pass is dropped by Calvin Ridley. We were talking about it. You know, this is this is the other end of it. You know, Jacob Coker, he can throw the football. He can't catch it too. And Calvin Ridley, who's an unbelievable talent. You secure that catch first, find, find the pylon second. Those receivers, the savvy ones, the guys that, that Lane Kiffin was talking about, they know where they are on the field. They secure that catch first. There's a lot of great football in front of Calvin Ridley. He's going to want another crack at that one. 35 yard attempt from Adam Griffith. He hit earlier from 40, his longest of the year. He is now two out of six. Boy, hits that one. You can hear the impact all the way up here. We're 200 yards away, it feels like. Hit that one solidly, and the crowd enjoying the success of their field goal kicker, Adam Griffith. That'll push Alabama's lead out to 27 with 12-21 to play. Dory OK in the studio. Tennessee getting closer to snapping that 10-game skid against Florida. Jalen Hurd's second touchdown of the game. He's got 98 rushing yards. Tennessee up 13. Seven minutes and change to go. Boy, there are some running backs in this league, and that is one of them right there in Jalen Hurd. A true sophomore. Ooh. Another one of those young guys that just burst on the scene a season ago. 27-0 here. ULM has just really had a hard time moving the football and Garrett Smith the redshirt freshman whew, he has been swallowed up by crimson jerseys all day he really has engulfed by the tide all game long when he has had time there's been nowhere to go with the football and eventually the front has caught up with him seven pressures four sacks he's just been harried all game long All in 79 yards of offense. The eight penalties for 80 yards haven't exactly helped, but there's a false start. Make it nine penalties now against ULM. False start. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. First down. Todd Berry's 
We've seen his offense on a couple of different occasions when they start a series first down with a false start. I think it's the third of possession where they've started out at first and 15. Smith. Gain of a yard, Reggie Raglan there. Tackle number four for Reggie. He's one of the more active members of the Bama defense. When we talk about the front three and four, with the balance of the front seven, a lot of them hinge on the play at number 19. He's a guy that on game days they say he's not the most vocal guy out there. He's not calling the defensive calls, but he's the guy that they look to. He's the centerpiece of their defense. Smith, another run. This one will lose a yard. Jaron Reed with tackle number five. How about Reed today? Five tackles, two behind the line. He has a sack, a pass broken up, and a quarterback pressure as well today. Look at the arms on that dude. I mean, it's anatomically, it's not fair. It's like he's got four <laughs> legs. Those arms are enormous. And boy, does he use them well. Boy, they can lever these blocks as well as anybody. Over the middle, it's picked off. Ronnie Harrison to the 20 yard line. The first interception for the true freshman out of Tallahassee, Florida. We mentioned Garrett Smith has been under duress all game long. Here's Ronnie Harrison. He's going to be working on a Jalen Holly. In the slot, they've liked this matchup before. See number 21 coming into your screen and underneath, and that ball is just thrown behind Holly and right to Ronnie Harrison. Nice hands. And he gets a lot of playing time and their dime looks, their dime pressure packages. And they're looking to get another DB on the field. Number 15 has played a pretty good ball game. A guy who's probably going to be seeing more and more playing time. Coker stays in the game at quarterback. That's the center. Ball sweep near side. That'll go to Damian Harris. He'll pick up a couple of yards. They said we would see quite a bit of Harris today. Now, Derrick Henry did miss a couple of days of practice, had tonsillitis this week. Maybe trying to get him a little bit of rest, save him for what they hope will be a big day against Georgia. Harris fans on the block though. Cooper to the end zone, touchdown. Ardarius Stewart, 16 yard touchdown reception from Jake Coker. Nice patience on that throw, Dave. It looked like he wanted to go to Richard Mullaney underneath at first. Showing some of that arm strength. He put that one in there on a rope. To Ardarius Stewart and Stewart. Did his quarterback good on the other end of that reception. We've seen some drops. Calvin Ridley on the previous possession resulted in a field goal attempt. That time our Darius Stewart taking care of business. One after is up and good and Alabama has pushed it out to 34 now. Interception by a true freshman. Setting up the touchdown Ronnie Harrison. And then Stewart with the touchdown. Great okay in the studio coming up a little over half hour from now. Our third game of our triple header. Maddie Mock in Missouri visiting Kentucky trying to stay undefeated on the season. They will or at least are expected to have the services of Russell Hansborough at tailback. He's been working out. Does not look limited to this point guys. Yeah Dar, I was watching that along with you and he did not look like he was 100%. But nonetheless, having him on the field certainly helps Matty Mock, I would think, against Kentucky. Just a threat. They need some help, that's for sure. I mean, offensively, they've looked shaky all season. Speaking of shaky, pass game for ULM's been a little shaky against this Alabama defense, and there's a lot of reasons why. Yeah, but I tell you what, I was wondering why this pass was so off, because Garrett Smith has been largely on target. 
Dalvin Tomlinson got another tip to set up this interception. Bo Davis, the defensive line coach at Alabama, I don't know if he's got these guys jumping rope, what they're doing, if they're working out with the, the women's volleyball team, but they get their hands up and they block more passes and it's more than just an incompletion. It sets up turnovers like that. Rayleigh Brown will come in at quarterback now. His first pass right through the hands of Ben Luckett. They'll say, is that behind the line? Luckett falls on top of it, loses his helmet. So Braley Brown, a guy who's been in this program now for five years, he played 12 games last year, coming in and out for this ULM offense. Actually played quite a bit a couple of years ago when Colton Browning was injured. Was beaten out by the redshirt freshman Garrett Smith. Real good battle all the way up until the first game of the season. Now he's getting some work here in the fourth quarter. Trying to swing past the other way. Holland. Out to the 23 yard line. John Deion Hamilton along with Hootie Jones. Getting the running backs involved a little bit. Let those guys participate too. We've already mentioned there without Rashawn Caesar that time. Been lucky. Now Devontae McNeil getting some catches. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Number six. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. So Hootie Jones, who was. Playing his hometown team out of Monroe, Louisiana, with the face mask. Hey, who do was hold my hand, not hold my face mask, right? What, that, that was went that was solid. Is that how it went? That was. Who did get him in the game? We're excited to get him in the game. I'm sure the coaches aren't pleased with that result. So, Bradley Brown introduces himself to the front line of that Alabama defense. Picks up a yard. Hit pretty hard. We'll bring up second down. Braley Brown, you know, these guys are competitors. They always want to get out there. They always want to play. But after the day that he's seen Garrett Smith go through and the beating that he's taken, not only as a ball carrier in some of their read game, but also as a passer. Braley Brown, I hope he stretched out before he got out there. Ernest Carrington now comes in at quarterback as Brown goes to the sideline. A run a little option game to the left side. That goes to Luckett. Carrington. Out of humble Texas. Didn't think we'd see him today. Well, next week, ULM, they're going to host Georgia Southern. Get some uh, back in conference. Georgia Southern did a good season a, a year ago. Give it a couple of different looks now. Sometimes you get late games like this and you want to dress up the film a little bit. Give your opponent something else to look at. On the near side. Flag comes in. Marcus Green was running down the near side. Pass interference on the defense, number 28. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Boy, Nick Saban is hot down there. He says the ball was tipped. Well, I mean, just playing the averages, it probably was. <laughs> yeah. they, they tip every pass, it seems like. They're hand fighting there towards the end. Well, to me, you know, the receiver's initiating the contact. End up getting your head around. You know, even, even if the ball weren't tipped. Well, they have been tipped. Ben Luckett will pick up three yards. Look, see if this doesn't get nah. It came out high. Well, it's not really not even close. But hey, why not? I mean, why wouldn't you say that? I would say that it was close. I'm not going to say it wasn't close. Your definition of close and my definition of close <laughs> obviously are different. Don't drive behind me. <laughs> that depth perception. 
Inside handoff to the 35 yard line. Gain of five. Well, as it is, you know, it injects a little bit of life into the ULM offense. And it gets them across midfield all this entire half. The Warhawks have played in the shadows of their own goalposts. Alabama enjoying tremendous field position because their defense has just not let the Warhawk O get going at all. Third down. Need to pick up a couple of yards for the first down. Play clock at one. ULM will take a timeout. We'll take a break with time. Okay, in studio, Kentrell Brothers leading a defense that ranks second in the SEC in defensive efficiency. Missouri and Kentucky are nightcap coming up about 30 minutes from now. It's getting interesting in Gainesville. Will Greer to Brandon Powell. It's a six-point game now. Tennessee football under four minutes to go. Guys, we'll keep you posted. I sure hope you do, Dar. Tennessee has to hold on to that win I'm, for their Ooh. mental well-being. They have to find a way to win a game when they've got a lead. Third down and a long two coming up for the Warhawks. Nice one-handed catch by Luckett, but he is met on the spot. Bounces off one player, and then his helmet comes flying off. And he'll be real close to the first down. What a great catch by Ben Luckett. Well, this is a guy the coaches are really high on at ULM, then takes a brutal shot from Dylan Lee. Helmet goes rocketing off. That's a great grab, one-handed all the way. Look at, by the way, a red shirt freshman. Just does get it up for the first down. 556 left in this one. Clearly the best drive of the game for ULM right here. It's been helped out by Alabama a little bit with a big pass interference penalty. That was that was kind of the energy injection that they needed and since been able to move the football. Off the hands of Devontae McNeil. Uh, Ryan Anderson coming off the end. He had a free run at Braley Brown and he pulled up there at the tail end. He's already been flagged once for a would be targeting foul. And that time wisely pulled up. You're targeting in this half, and you're missing two quarters next week. Another pass batted down. This is crazy how many of these. Keith Holcomb came flying in. Alabama trying to disguise their blitz. Looked like he was coming from the other side. They backed off it and sent Holcomb from the other side. And Keith Holcomb was coming clean in the B gap between the guard and tackle, unaccounted for in the protection scheme. Right in Brown's face. Really had little chance to get that ball off. Now it's third down and 10. Alabama trying to poach this shutout. You know, they'd love to have it as a confidence boost heading to Athens next week. Brown drops. A loss of five on the play. There just isn't time. You can't hang on to it. And, and the thing is, from an escapability standpoint, they do a good job of staying in their rush lanes. It's not just a bunch of freelancing. They squeeze that pocket. And by the time the quarterbacks are realizing it for ULM, there's nowhere to go. Warhawks on fourth down. Keep their offense out on the field. Fourth and 13. Line to make. If they get it to the 22, they'll have the first down. Pressure again. And another sack. Rashawn Evans 
That is sack number six. A loss of 10. And ULM turns it over on downs. 4.45 to play. Alabama trying to close this one out and head to Athens next week. Ironically enough, both Alabama and Georgia have faced Louisiana Monroe. We were at both of those games. So, Stitch, break this down for me. Who, who kind of wins the battle versus ULM? You know, to me, you look at it offensively, Georgia far more efficient in their passing performance versus our, our control team and ULM. And same for the ground game. You know, it was a multifaceted attack with Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb. But defensively, it doesn't get any more dominant than what Alabama's been able to put together here today. You know, really, Georgia, they gave up some significant drives, 206 passing yards to ULM, albeit in week one. It was a totally different story for a couple of drives there in a lightning shortened game for the Dogs matchup versus the Warhawks. And really, Dave, it kind of sets up nicely for next week's game because you're talking about a defense that has dominated this football game in Alabama that will be facing an offense in Georgia that looked far more proficient versus this same football team. It's going to be fun to watch those two strengths of run defenses versus a run oriented offense. Cooper Bateman comes in at quarterback, the sophomore. Try to close this one out, hands it off to Derek Gore, the sophomore running back out of Syracuse, New York. They lose three yards on that play. The clock closes in on four and a half to play. Cooper Bateman got the start last week. Coach just said they wanted to bring an element of a quarterback run game to the table. That did not materialize. And after a few series, it was time to bring in Jay Coker. Eric Gore out to the 47. And the coaches have kind of allowed that Jay Coker is a superior passer uh, to Cooper Bateman. And as was demonstrated versus Ole Miss, certainly opportunistic as a runner as well on a number of different occasions. But as far as uh, the read run game, especially with some of these split zone runs where the quarterback can pull it and run it, you know, Cooper Bateman would be the more threatening of the two. On third down, Bateman, great drop. Underneath throw, pass caught. Charlotte, he's about a half yard shy of the first down. We've seen that a couple of different times today. They made completions, and end up just shy of the yardage needed to convert there, setting up a, a fourth down attempt. Clark trying to reach for it. I don't know that he had enough. He did a good job stringing this play out. Tevin Cage is his linebacker position. He was blitzing inside and then trailed this run. Clark was waiting to find a spot to get upfield. They had waited too long as they turned it over on downs. Just getting word that Florida has pulled off the miracle. Wow. They scored a touchdown on. Fourth down on basically a last gasp effort to take a one point lead in that game with around 90 seconds to go. That is that's unbelievable. I mean, if you're if you're a Tennessee fan right now, you've got to be about as crushed as you could possibly be. You've got a 17 point lead on Oklahoma. It gets away from you. It's three years in a row where they've had Florida in a position in 90 seconds yet. In this one. But to give up a lead late like that, wow, the roller coaster there, right? Dory Noka in the studio. Guys, you were talking about here's how it happened on a fifth, fourth down for Florida. Will Greer to Antonio Callaway. The freshman does the rest, takes it the distance. They're five for five on fourth downs. Florida with a one point lead. Tennessee ball on the Florida. 34 with 10 seconds to go, guys. <laughs> Chris Dorn's got to be going crazy. Yeah. Well, he's an objective observer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
SEC conference play is nothing like it. Yeah, nothing about, like it. That, that matchup's living up to its billing, hasn't it? Darrington at quarterback now for ULM. He'll hand it off to Luckett. Give him three yards. Yeah, some a fun slate of games next week. Starting with the team we're seeing here facing Georgia, a team that's the top that East Division. Albeit a one-loss team, Alabama. That was a strange loss versus Ole Miss, those five turnovers. This is still a team that can certainly contend for that West Division title. You know, that's something not lost on Nick Saban. And while Alabama fans really took that loss hard, and it's still in front of them. No question. I, you know, look, it, it's they've got issues. There's no question. Right. This isn't a fully realized product. We've seen it unfold here today, especially offensively. But there's so much football left to be played. We're, we're just this is the fourth week of the regular season. They played one conference game. <laughs> you know, they played one conference game in, in the time that Nick Saban's been here. He's only lost more than one conference game twice. And one of them was in that first year in 07, another in, 02, in uh, 2010. They just they do a great job of rallying after games like that. From your side. Stoney Hawkins with that reception. Time now for our ego player of the game. And well, there wasn't one individual. There were a bunch of them. Anybody that played defense today for Alabama is part of that. Yeah. They were awesome today. And seven quarterback pressure, six sacks, only one missed tackle. That's the part that really jumps out. I mean, it, it, as great as the pressure has been, the stats are eye popping. One missed tackle. That's a cleanly played game on the defensive side of the ball. Before the snap, ball start. Offense, number 79. Five yard penalty, third down. Well, that's penalty number 10 against ULM. Todd Berry will have a conversation or two about that when they get back to Monroe. You know, how fitting is it that for the ego player of the game, you give it to an entire defense? No way nobody has an issue. <laughs> Nobody thinks they're bigger than the team, that sort of thing. Only you can wrap that around like yeah. that. Put a, yeah, put a bow on it. It's yeah. Freudian. It's On third down, Carrington will throw high, and that'll be incomplete with 50 seconds to go. Oh, the last time Alabama allowed under 100 yards to an offense, how about the BCS championship game in 2012? That's amazing. That's that's facing and LSU was on an epic run that year. Unbelievable defense, special teams contributing to their undefeated season. Alabama avenging that loss. Timeout, Alabama. That's a Alabama and Georgia next week in Athens. Been a few years since they met on the gridiron. Been a few years since they met in the regular season, but the last time they met was for the championship in 2012. How about Kate Foster's 49-yard field goal attempt? Block. Alec Ogletree scoops it up. Georgia led 21 to 10. Then A.J. McCarron would lead a comeback. Connects with Amari Cooper late in the fourth. Bama up 32-28, and here is the play that ended the game. Chris Conley makes a reception, falls down, no timeouts, clock winds down, and Alabama wins it. Simply put, the best SEC championship game in history. No question. Uh, to me, it was the best game I've ever witnessed. Had two endings. Well, they thought it was yeah. over with an interception. They overturn it. Georgia makes the drive. One of the greatest games in general. Much less than a championship. Well. This is what's in store coming up for Alabama. Back home against Arkansas at Texas A&M. You know, you look at those, some of those matchups in there, though, Dave. You know, Georgia, that offense and what Georgia does offensively, that matches really well with Alabama's strength defensively. Same for Arkansas. It's the A&Ms that give you concern, and maybe even an Auburn, although Auburn, who knows what they look like offensively now.
Alabama today in terms of rushing the football. I have 138 yards on the ground, only 166 yards passing. This was an offense that had put up over 500 yards per game, but this ULM defense, I tip my cap to them. They came and played hard, made life difficult offensively for Alabama today. Nothing was easy. No question. And that was with really short fields. I mean, ULM played on a 50-yard football field the entire second half and did a pretty good job versus this Alabama offense. A lot of question marks still for the Crimson Tide and what they're trying to do offensively, but they've got all the answers they need right now on the defensive side of the ball. 34-0 shutout win by Alabama. They will push their record to 3-1. and one. ULM will go to 1-2. and two. Their two losses to two beasts here in the Southeastern Conference, Georgia, and this Alabama team. Let's go downstairs and visit with Casey. Coach, you said you wanted to see Jake Coker play with passion and energy today. How do you feel like he did that? I think he did a nice job today. You know, dropped five or six balls, one for a touchdown. So, you know, we obviously got to get our receivers better. We got some guys injured there, so some younger guys are getting a chance to play. So, just got to get them to play with more confidence. How do you get them to play with more confidence this week? Play, play, make plays. They'll do it. Rock. Only one missed tackle on the defensive side of the ball. What did you learn about your team as you prepare to head to Athens? Well, you know, I think our guys did a good job of practicing, understanding their offense, and did a good job of playing the plays. And we tackled well in space, which was a big emphasis. We wanted to get more turnovers, but, you know, maybe next week. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. So Nick Saban will, I'm sure, in the next 30 minutes after his press conference, look at Athens and think about the Georgia Bulldogs. Final score here, 34 to nothing. Coming up next, it's 